Welcome back to Good Morning San Diego. It can be difficult to manage stress and your mental health for you. <coughs> Excuse me during this uh, time. So join us via Skype with some tips on how to uh, keep your brain fit as researcher and consultant, Dr. Heidi Hanna. Good morning, Dr. Hanna. How are you doing? Good morning, Paul. It's great to be here with you. I'm oh. good. How are you? You guys are having some laughs over there this morning. Well, right? we, we try to keep it light during a pandemic. That's our uh, pandemic mode. But of course, you know, everybody saw the news in Lemon Grove yesterday and everybody, you know, a tragedy that we would like to keep to a bare minimum as we uh, go through this pandemic together. I think that's where you come in. Some tips to keep us mentally fit. Yeah, so I'll actually just start with the fact that you all are using laughter. And, you know, we've talked about this before, that healthy humor, when it's timed out appropriately, is actually very helpful. It gives us a little bit of relief in the moment. And there's some things we can kind of think about with regards to that, with the timing of the humor, with the relationship and the bond we have with other people. But I think there's a tendency right now, especially, to feel almost guilty laughing because so many people are struggling. And I I just want to emphasize for you all, as well as those watching, that having a laugh and actually looking at life with some levity doesn't minimize the challenge and the difficulty um, that we're all experiencing right now, but it just gives us a moment of relief and actually helps the brain to work more effectively so that we can problem solve better. So I've been working with a lot of companies, especially here in San Diego, to help them kind of circuit break stress in the moment on more of a triage effect. And then also to be thinking about how do we build brain fitness over the long term, because although we're dealing with some increased uncertainty and challenge right now, stress has been a problem for a long time. Mental health has been a challenge that's getting you know, more and more attention right now. And, and I'm grateful for that, that we're having these conversations. Well, Dr. Hanna, let, let's pick it up right there then. Uh, you, I, I'm sitting across from you or Zoomed across from you and, and I'm telling you about how I have money woes, I have... I'm stuck in a house and the kids are making too much noise. The pets won't leave me alone. They won't... Yeah. Walk me through it. What are you, what are the steps you're going to teach me that I can alleviate some of that stress? Yeah. So the first thing I think is just to acknowledge and appreciate what you're saying. I mean, times are hard. Absolutely. And one of the worst things we tend to do is because we feel uncomfortable with someone else's pain or struggle, we want to fix it. So I can say it's not that bad. Other people have it worse than you. And that actually doesn't help at all. It's better to just acknowledge these are tough times. And we can do that with other people and we can do that for ourselves as well. And then appreciate that how we feel is actually trying to help us. So stress in itself is just fuel that we can use to create some sort of positive change. But when we don't take action in some way, it actually gets trapped and becomes toxic in our body. It actually rewires the way that our brain processes information. So if you could appreciate, for example, the sensation you're having and the fact that that's actually trying to help you bring more attention to what's going on, then we can adjust and make some sort of positive action. And it doesn't have to be huge. It could be, you know, doing our beach brain exercises where you just use some essential oils, listen to the sound of the ocean and calm your nervous system. Because in order to quiet the mind, we have to first calm the body and the nervous system. So I would, with you in particular, say, what have you used in the past that has been helpful for you. I know actually we've talked before and I had my stress monkeys, for example, and even something like that physically using a cue that reminds you to lead with love and serve in some way. I can do us sharing great examples of community members in San Diego who don't even have all the answers but they're stepping into some way to serve others in our community. And that's one of the greatest things we can do. And by the way, it doesn't matter how old or young you are. This is a great thing to be teaching our kids at a young age is that their actions matter. And that even in difficult times like these, there's always a way that we can serve and actually help someone else. Well, I, I, let's expand on that because I think yeah. as adults, we all recognize the stress in one another. But we sometimes forget that this is a stressful time for the young'uns as well. What are the signs should we be looking there at? 
Yeah, I think I would encourage people to lean into those conversations. It's interesting you bring that up because I actually am very excited about a new program that I'm launching specifically for college and high school students. And this was started actually before the COVID-19 crisis, so it's even more relevant now. And over the weekends, I had the opportunity to interview a couple of teenagers. Uh, one is a family member, one's a good friend. And I was asking them, you know, what is this like for you? What What's making you feel stressed right now? And it was fascinating. They're actually giving me a lot of insight that I'll continue to share with viewers over the next couple of weeks. But one of the things they said was their workload has increased. And they actually feel like teachers are trying to overcompensate by not being in the classroom and giving them too much to do. And so I think just asking the questions, asking good constructive questions where we don't get stuck in the negative loop of feeling out of control, but actually saying, you know, what's triggering this for you? One of them is coming up with really creative ways to connect with his friends. And another one actually is in a romantic relationship for the first time. So we talked about how that was helpful and how it was actually really difficult for him because he's so in love and missing seeing his girlfriend in person. So I think having the conversations and just being willing to really appreciate what students are going through right now is important. And then the signs you want to watch for, or I would say, um, anytime are things like too much sleep, not enough sleep, lack of appetite, too much appetite. Really keep an eye on their dependence on technology because it's one thing to use it for school and to get some information, but if we're using it nonstop, technology is stimulating the reward pathways in the brain and it can actually be really addictive if we're not careful. Oh boy. Can I relate to that item? Uh, we'll, we'll leave it there. Our next time I, uh, we chat, I want to talk about the role of physical activity as it relates to walking and jogging and things like that. But that, that's for our next conversation. Dr. Hannah, thank you so much for making time for us.